Like Warren Buffett said, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. Investing is not a game where the guy with the 160 IQ beats the guy with the 130 IQ. It's about understanding some simple principles and being patient for the long haul. In the upcoming chapters, I'll show you and John how to pick the best dividend stocks for your dividend kingdom. The different types of stocks, high dividend and dividend growth stocks. Which one is better? The compounding effect and much more. In the end, I'll show you a top 1% ranked portfolio and two ways to reach a million dollar valuation with two different strategies using the stocks we pick today. But first things first, let's understand what dividend investing is all about. Dividend stocks are pretty cool in the stock market. They let you earn money from your investments in a special way. Basically, when you own a dividend stock, you own a piece of a company that gives some of its profits back to you. These profits that come to you are called dividends. Usually companies that offer dividend stocks are big and stable. They have a habit of sharing their profits with the people who own their stock. Let's make it simpler with an example. Imagine you buy 100 shares of a company. Each share costs $10, so your total investment is $1,000. Now, let's say this company gives out 50 cents per share every year as dividends. Since you have 100 shares, you'll get $50 in total for that year. That's like getting a 5% return on your investment just from those dividends. So you're making $50 without doing anything extra just by owning those shares. Having dividend stocks has some pretty nice benefits. First off, it gives you a regular income. Unlike other stocks where the value can go up and down a lot, dividends are more steady and predictable. This makes dividend investing attractive, especially for people who want a steady income like retirees. Also, dividend stocks are usually safer compared to other types of stocks. Since they're from big, stable companies, they don't swing wildly in the stock market. Plus, when the economy's not doing so well, having that regular income from dividends can really help out. Good, dividend investing is gold, but where to start? You start by selecting quality dividend stocks. Starting out with dividend investing can be really exciting as you begin to build up your portfolio. One of the first things to do is to find top stocks that pay dividends, and one of the easiest ways to do so is by using our channel's partner platform, Seeking Alpha. It's been my go-to tool for winning in investments. It's easy and simple, and I love how I can access under-the-radar investing ideas, earnings call transcripts, and breaking news. Plus, the exclusive database stock ratings have been a game-changer. Stocks rated strong buy and their alpha picks have beaten the S&P 500 by over 80%. So definitely check them out in the description. In fact, they've promised to give a 20% discount on premium membership with a 7-day free trial and a 10% discount on Alpha Picks to those in our community who join using the link from the video description. Check it out. Okay, back to finding dividend stocks. All you have to do is go to the Seeking Alpha website using our link. Click the Stock Screener option on the left sidebar. Then select Top Dividend Stocks on the next page. Now, you have a bunch of good dividend stocks to select from. But there's a lot more to it, and don't worry, I'll explain everything. In the end, I'll show you a portfolio that can reach a million-dollar valuation with a less than $300 per month investment. The next important step in building your dividend kingdom is the dividend-paying ability itself. Which brings us to our next chapter, high yield or dividend growth, which is better? It's like choosing between getting a big chunk of money now or getting smaller amounts that grow over time. High yield stocks are like getting a big chunk of money now. They pay out a lot of dividends compared to the price you pay for the stock. Sounds great, right? But there's a catch. Sometimes these high yields can be risky. The company might struggle to keep paying out those big dividends, and they could even cut them down. Back to Seeking Alpha. On the page, click Dividends and arrange the stocks from the highest yield to the lowest. Now you see the top three dividend stocks that all have an over 10% return. This might sound like a good return, right? But when you look at the stock prices one by one, you see that these stocks have either not grown or in some cases have gone down over 50% in the last 10 years. 
week. This is because these stocks have an over 80% payout ratio, which means they don't have enough cash to reinvest in their business and grow. On the other hand, dividend growth stocks are like planting seeds that grow into big trees over time. They might not give you as much money up front, but they increase their dividends regularly. So even though you start with a smaller payout, it grows bigger and bigger each year. Plus, these stocks are often from strong companies that can afford to keep increasing their dividends. In the end, it's a bit like choosing between instant gratification or long-term growth. Personally, I stick to a limit of not going beyond a 10% current dividend yield for long-term investments. This is because, in the long run, what matters more is the growth rate of dividends, not just the current yield. I'll explain more about that when we talk about finalizing the stock selection process. To avoid falling into a trap, don't just focus on high yields. For example, if a company's stock price recently dropped a lot, its dividend yield might seem really high, but it might not be a good investment. The drop in price could be a sign that the company is having problems, and there's a risk they might reduce their dividend payments later on. Focusing on dividend growth is a plus point, and here's the reason why. Let's talk about something super cool known as the snowball effect. Imagine you're rolling a snowball down a hill. At first, it's small, but as it rolls, it picks up more and more snow and gets bigger and bigger. Well, the same thing can happen with your money when you invest in dividend stocks. Here's how it works. First, you start by investing some money in dividend stocks. Then, when those stocks pay out dividends, you reinvest that money back into buying more stocks. So now, you own more stocks that pay even more dividends. And guess what? Those dividends get reinvested too, buying even more stocks and earning even more dividends. It's like a cycle that keeps repeating and growing your money over time. That's the snowball effect in action. The best part is, the longer you keep rolling that snowball, the bigger it gets. So even if you start with a small investment, over time, it can grow into something huge. That's the power of the snowball effect, and it's one of the secrets to building wealth through dividend investing. And the only thing that grows it faster is the strong dividend growth rate. In the end, I'll show you how this snowball effect can grow an investment from thousands to over a million dollars. But back to our topic, selecting the stocks. The best way to find these stocks is to check out stocks known as dividend aristocrats or dividend kings. These are companies that have been paying and increasing their dividends for a really long time, over 25 or 50 years respectively. This can save you from having to look through a ton of stocks, which can be overwhelming. Even when you focus on dividend aristocrats or kings, you'll still have around 80 stocks to choose from. To keep it simple, you should pay attention to four important things when deciding which stocks to invest in. These are 1. Dividend Payout Ratio This tells us how much of a company's profits are used to pay dividends. A ratio of less than 50% is usually good because it means the company has room to grow its earnings. But if it's over 70%, it could be risky because there might not be enough left for the company to invest in its own growth. 2. Dividend Coverage Ratio This shows how many times a company can pay dividends using its profits. A higher number is better because it means the company can easily cover its current and future dividend payments. 3. Free cash flow to equity. This is the money left for shareholders after all the bills are paid. It's important for a company to be able to fully cover its dividend payments with this money. And four, net debt to a beta ratio. This checks if a company has too much debt compared to its earnings. It's better if this ratio is lower than similar companies. If it keeps going up, it could mean the company might struggle to pay dividends in the future. So, paying attention to these ratios helps us make smart choices about which dividend stocks to invest in. And applying all these steps, I've selected the following five stocks for this portfolio. They include NRG Energy, Kroger, JP Morgan Chase & Company, NextEra Energy, and L3 Harris Technologies. And this is what it looks like on Seeking Alpha for me. 
If you click on the Health Score tab, you can see that this portfolio is ranked 4.52 out of 5. The second table shows you that it's ranked in the top 1% of all portfolios. The steps to get here and build the Dividend Kingdom portfolio were easy and simple. We found a bunch of dividend stocks, narrowed it down using consecutive year filters, selected solid dividend growth stocks, and then narrowed it down using the four factors we just saw. Seeking Alpha did the hard part of putting the data together, and we used our measures to qualify the best dividend stocks here. So now that we have a list of stocks for our dividend kingdom, the question is how much can John earn from this portfolio? To calculate this, we need to determine the portfolio's current dividend yield, its dividend growth, and the average growth of investment over time. For this, all we have to do is average out the rates of our stocks. Separately, these returns look like this. Next Era Energy has a current dividend yield of 2.79%, a dividend growth rate of 10.98%, and an annual share price appreciation of 11.08%. Kroger's at 2.05, 13.63, and 8.91%. NRG Energy is at 2.09%, 12.12, and 8.68%. JP Morgan Chase has a current dividend yield of 2.22%, a dividend growth rate of 10.83%, and an annual share price appreciation of 13.41%, and L3 Harris Technologies is at 2.17%, 10.88%, and 11.16%. When we average it out, which is simple, we add all the current yields and divide by 5. We do the same for dividend growth and share price appreciation. Then we get our portfolio returns, which will look something like this. With all five in the portfolio, the current dividend yield is 2.26%. The dividend growth rate is at 11.69%, and the annual share price appreciation is at 10.65%. Now that you have this, there are two ways to invest in this portfolio. One is for those who've saved up some investment for the future and want to invest, and one is for those who don't have a lump sum of money to invest. First, let's start with a one-time investment. If you're someone who has, say, $25,000 in savings, then this is the best option for you. In this strategy, John invests $5,000 in each stock, making his starting portfolio value $25,000. By the end of the first year, John's investment is projected to reach $28,228. After 10 years, the same investment is projected to triple to $85,020. But the real compounding effect of the investment starts after that. After 20 years, John's investment will reach $295,823. Give it 10 more years, and in 30 years, John's initial investment has the potential to grow to a valuation of $1,055,671, and he'll receive $28,377 in dividends every year, which is about $2,365 every month. In total, this investment has the potential to add $1,030,671 to his initial investment, which includes $812,690 from the growth of the investment, while $217,981 came from the dividends. This sounds great, but most of us don't have a lump sum of money saved up. For this, the best strategy is to invest in this portfolio by investing $250 each month which is around $3,000 per year. And if you can do that, this is what your investment projection is gonna look like. In the first year, John's investment is projected to reach $6,387. After 10 years, the same investment is projected to grow nearly tenfold to $65,620. After 20 years, John's investment will reach $284,450. Give it 10 more years, and in 30 years, John's initial investment has the potential to grow to a valuation of $1,072,018. And he'll receive $28,736 in dividends every year, which is about $2,395 every month. In total, 
this investment has the potential to add $979,018 to his initial investment, which includes $770,808 from the growth of the investment, while $208,210 came from the dividends. So you can reach a million dollar valuation using both strategies. Now it's up to you when to start. This is how you build your own dividend kingdom. And if you want to retire with $20 million, click the video on the screen.